Where are we going? Success! What up? So I just got done watching this uh, video with Skyhopper and The Awakened Brave. And I think this dude's name is Andre. That's what they were saying. And this is this is fucking awesome. <laughs> I need to keep quit saying that. Uh, Paul Skyhopper, that this was a very beautiful expression uh, from everyone. Even even though Andre didn't say much, just just his presence. I mean, there's there's so many different forms. Like I said in my last video, and methods and ways of communing and communication and connection so just being able to be around someone with an awareness like there's so much going on if you can just quiet your mind and remember how to listen so I thought this was <laughs> this was very humorous in that uh I made that video about one of the things I touched upon was the synchronicities that have been happening and then so many of the things that I uh, said were, were also said in this. So it was like pretty, pretty awesome shite to experience. So yeah, while watching this, I uh, noticed a book lying on my counter and picked it up and randomly opened it up and <laughs> was inspired to share. So I'm, I'm going to read some of this, uh, quite a bit of it probably. I also, I want to get more used to reading <laughs> in such a way that it uh, becomes more meditative and because there's things that I want to share and read, but I want to do so in a way that's <laughs> doesn't sound like I'm just drudging along through it. <clears throat> but I'll stop and give my commentary, of course, throughout. So a lot of this stuff I'm going to read is, I mean, not only stuff that's talked about in this video, but stuff that I just talked about in my last one. Um, yeah, synchronicity is bound. It's magical times within the mist. Feelings of deep rest. We can make our minds so like still water that beings gather about us that they may see, it may be, their own images and so live for a moment with a clearer, perhaps even with a fiercer life because of our quiet. That's from W.B. Yeats. No idea who that is. But I dig it. <coughs> okay, let's see. Oh yeah, and this book <laughs> is called... You know what? No, it's just a book. <laughs> How about that? If anyone wants to know what it's called, yeah, I'll, I'll, I'll let them know, but for now, I'm just, I'm just reading from a book. We move so fast in American culture that few, that few of us remember the feeling of deep rest. We are attracted to the advertisements showing women who seem to be serenely resting in hot tubs or waking from a perfect night's sleep on a new mattress. 
We can rarely remember actually doing that ourselves. We may buy the hot tub or the mattress, but never acquire the feelings of rest that attracted us to this in the first place. Many of us are so out of touch with our bodies that we deny them the basic need to rest. We pride ourselves on a discipline that gets more than it should out of us. Some of us see rest as wasted time rather than a source of energy and renewal. How many times do you hear people say, I'll sleep when I'm dead? Well, really, you're already dead because you're not really alive yet. And that's the case with most people walking around nowadays. Do you remember those special times on a vacation? Or when you have slept in and your mind and body feel just right? Your body knows when it is ready to awaken if we do not override it with our demands. Deep rest occurs when you can set down the burdens of your day or life and feel the freedom of a new start. It is very hard to look at all that you carry unless you set it down. There are many activities that help us eliminate distractions and achieve rest. Certain things create an experience of letting go. Some feel this way when swimming. They are creatures of the water and have always known it. Swimming laps or just being submerged in water gives them a feeling of deep rest. Exercise breaks down patterns of tension for others. And dancing, running, stretching, and aerobics work well. Massage can be a wonderful source of deep rest because of the laying on of hands is so healing. You are nurturing your body. Oops, you are turning. Well, yeah, you are turning your body over to another person whom you can trust to treat it gently and return it to you. Yoga can produce the same deep breaths as therapeutic massage, sitting quietly while you dream, staring into space, or emptying your mind can create a feeling of peace. It is a challenge to see how long you can sit with comfort and do nothing. Many of us have to learn to sit still, to relax, and to let our minds clear. That is why Americans pay for meditation classes. It does not seem to be a skill that we grow up with. Deep breathing is probably the most powerful source of a state of rest. The body needs air for life, but most of our breathing is shallow and quick, whereas the lungs thrive on longer, deeper breaths. A vision journey requires the best of what you have physically, which is the body's most natural state. So yeah, I touched upon that a little bit in my last video. Um, the two polarities say yin and yang, deep rest and then extreme exertion. Choosing when and how and quality over the quantity of engagement is key. Balancing rituals. Breath is the bridge which connects life to consciousness, which unites your body to your thoughts. Whenever your mind becomes scattered, 
Use your breath as the means to take hold of your mind again. I'm not going to pronounce this right, but it says, uh, I don't know. Tichnatan. <laughs> but uh, that's pretty powerful, and that has deep, uh, deep level, DNA level, um, engagements with me, remembrances of, uh, going to, into, uh, subtler realms within mind, within the mental layers of being and witnessing the connection between breath and energy and breath and thought and then even tapping into that state where you're kind of in a no breath type of uh, place which if you look into Kun Lun styles of meditation or that practice or method it's essentially the, the exact thing of, and they describe it as kind of like your DNA unwinding and then you just access it's kind of like you collapse both of your <coughs> channels like your sun and moon into your central channel so from an outside observer, it may look like someone's dead, but really they're in a very blissed out, potentially a very blissed out state. And you don't need any drugs to achieve those things. I have witnessed this while people are on various types of drugs and in being a... Uh, I guess you could say a shaman or a, a guide for them uh, holding a safe space for them to feel safe and in, in letting go that's that's kind of the most important thing not really feeling the need to guide or dictate but just encouraging the person to surrender and allow and experience no matter what may come up, that they are safe. Many wisdom traditions recognize how hard it is to clear the mind. So they use special rituals, spinning prayer wheels, rosaries, chanting, singing, dancing, tai chi, all concentrate and clear the mind. Church ceremonies, making circles of stone, the beautiful Hopi and Tibetan sand paintings are all rituals of both respect and concentration. <clears throat> Any symbol that centers the mind is useful. Wisdom traditions create a certain set of ritual movements or objects to signal memory and return us to reverent places in our minds. Hypnosis is a relaxation technique that can both open and concentrate the mind. These tools are called rites of intensification by anthropologists. Some of these rites involve the whole group or community Societies may hold rites of an intensification to protect a village, to ensure rain, sun, or fertility, or to prepare the way for an individual undertaking a journey. You may decide to hold a celebration for your friends and family before you start on your way. The power of our friends surrounding us and offering their help is not to be underestimated. There are many, there are as many balancing rituals as there are communities. It is the unique nature of humans to keep inventing new ways to live. Some Americans 
Some American snake handlers believe that picking up a venomous rattlesnake is a confrontation with the supernatural. Those free of sin will be cleansed. Those who are not of sin will be bitten and die. <coughs> yeah, that's probably something I shouldn't have read just because some of this is a little ridiculous. Uh, just just because of the belief structures that you know people have grown up in, <coughs> what they've chosen to believe. Alright, onward, acceptance, oh, hold up, there we go, acceptance of humility, the most beautiful and most profound emotion we can experience is the sensation of the mystical, it is the sower of the true science, he to whom this emotion is a stranger who can no longer stand wrapped in awe, is as good as dead. That deeply emotional conviction of the presence of a su superior reasoning power, which is revealed in the incomprehensible universe, forms my idea of God. Albert Einstein. That's pretty good shit. <laughs> That's some shit beyond E, e equals MC squared. Access to wisdom, to the resources of a greater power, requires that we recognize the limits of our own. We must, we must make a conscious choice to open ourselves to knowledge. And this is, all, all, all of life is a choice. And, and the limits there, that's, that's very important as well. It's very important to make the choice of clearing our ability to perceive our reality and discern our reality. And that's where we find our limitations. And that's how we move past those limitations and dissolve them into the all. That's whenever the gnosis and the allowance, uh, we become the guru. The student within allows the teachings to come That's, that's the process, more than realizing that we're limited beings, or that we're limited within our body, or, or whatever. Like you'll, you'll hear all kinds of stuff. <laughs> I mean, like, like I and many of us know and keep repeating, cleanse the lens, go within. Discern your reality, and experience for yourself what is what. Let go of your BS belief systems. Connection to a non-ordinary reality, to the power of the supernatural, assumes that you accept the existence of a power greater than human. <laughs> it's realizing what words really mean, what what the essence of life is, what isness is, what beingness is, what awareness and consciousness is. And then maybe you can come to understand what physical form is a representation of. A amalgamation of all the universal energies in harmony and balance a man and woe man of many hues within the eye of the storm the eye of the hurricane becoming the monad Humility is not fear, it is an attitude. 
each of us seeks wisdom in a condition of poverty and need. Uh, <laughs> you gotta kind of feel the intent behind the words there. Like, being in a place of truly seeking wisdom is kind of like emptying your cup. So you could see that um, being described that way. But more accurately, it's emptying yourself. And a lot of times that's going to be uh, the things preceding that are going to be, you know, hard times. And then things that uh, shake us to the core and really get us to uproot those things that we didn't know we were holding on to. We abandon, albeit briefly, the protection of our usual thoughts, frames, controls, and structure. Our minds, and therefore our souls, become defenseless. Suffering is thought to produce a heightened state of awareness. The ordeals or tests of a quest allow the breakthrough to special knowledge and the revealing of the sacred. The mind and heart may open in crisis as we search for new solutions in ways that they did in ways that they do not in our normal routine. Sacrifice symbolized the willingness to offer a gift to the greater power and recognition of one's own position as a supplicant. <sighs> Suffering is a form of sacrifice, but many cultures believe that the giving up of time, ego, or property is just as powerful. Given our current lifestyle and values, time may be a most appropriate sacrifice. Hmm. Okay. Onward. Let's see. Nope. <clears throat> Don't want to read that. We all have a desire, a remarkable need to transcend ourselves, and many more of us are now free to do so. Skills that were once available only to specialists are more available to everyone. There is rapture in the meeting of the inner and outer worlds as you sit alone, wherever you have chosen to be, prepared, available. The separate parts of yourself and your environment will begin to connect. It is a process of slowly becoming aware, becoming conscious of inner murmurings. <laughs> a single connection or insight may not create a new understanding, but many small steps will start the focus toward one. When a single happening resonates, a path will begin to appear. That's fucking gold. Yeah, this is just, uh, I don't know. The video I made and then watching this and then reading this stuff, it's like, <clears throat> this is good shite. The task is to go as deeply as possible into the darkness, to name the pain that one finds there, and the truth of one's perceptions, and to emerge on the other side with permission to name one's reality from one's own point of view. And say, uh, Francine? 
That's fucking glorious. In some societies, a spiritual leader will take you to this point of preparation and then leave you alone to carry out your mission. And that's the key there, because with so-called gurus and people, you know, that have all these followers or students, um, and then people that are like, oh, I, this person's been with me for years and we have this connection. It's like, what? Well, well, your, your purpose is to help these people transcend their, their state that they're in, not continue to help them. That's not helping anymore. So that's that's the key there is to get them get them to the point where they can take the step themselves and then finally you know do the work that they need to do for themselves. You have to you can hold their hand up to a point, but you have to let go and allow. And it's the same you know with so many aspects of our lives and and uh, even like uh, raising children. You can't shelter them, like, forever. You have to allow them to learn for themselves and take that step out into the world and learn and grow for themselves. Otherwise, you're just going to stunt their growth. Illness, divorce, unemployment. Oh no! <laughs> Loss or change can clarify our priorities very quickly. You may want a deeper knowledge of what is happening to our culture, or our politics, or just increased understanding, which happens through an understanding, and then all of those things become more clear as your perception and your ability to see with clarity heightens, strengthens, becomes more attuned to the inner clarity. The questions are often the answers, but there are so many that you must set your priorities. Often answering the big ones settles the little ones. Exactly. <clears throat> hmm. Let's see. You must be willing to allow your heart and mind to be touched. We are all called on this path to be our own unique selves. Only when our mission is clear can we see and support others. Yeah, and it's basically like only whenever you can truly love yourself can you love another. Only when, when you have truly helped yourself can you help others. Okay, we'll read this a little bit here. A little bit more, about 30 minutes in, all right. Many religions or philosophies emphasize light, sunrise services, candles, crystals, arms stretched upward, music, art, architecture, the spires of churches take us to heaven. <laughs> yeah, the word light is a word of impact, of opening, the idea of breaking through to the light, becoming the light, feeling the light within. It is an outward journey to create a oneness with the universe. What? <laughs> That's backwards. It requires no special instructions. It is a familiar path. You pitch your tent and awake before dawn, or you take a hike at sunrise. 
you welcome the first light and use it to inspire renewal. Crystals capture the light and bring it close to your being. There are also wisdom traditions that require you to pass through the darkness to reach the light. <laughs> uh, that's, that's just how it works, actually. And it's not passing through, it's dwelling within the darkness. He feeling the pain, feeling what that darkness is, and letting go, releasing into it. In realizing a spark of awareness, of consciousness, of beingness, from the darkness comes the light. Most of us have a natural resistance to the dark side because most people are not willing to heal or do the inner work. But the shadow is a very old theme in mythology and religion. Heroes had to travel through hell and confront monsters to obtain love or power. The crucifixion is a horrible death leading to eternal life. The path of the martyr was usually one of torture. The Buddha left his home and placed himself at the mercy of passerby as a beggar. Nelson Mandela spent 26 years in prison. Oh, I didn't say he died there, though. Hmm. <laughs> when hallucinogenic drugs were used to seek enlightenment, many people were afraid of dark visions. I don't know why she keeps saying were. That's just how it is. And you'll see a lot of, you know, uh, so-called enlightened people say basically that exact thing of why people should not uh, do entheogens or spirit uh, plant medicines because you might have dark visions or a bad trip. And that's a reflection of them unwilling to go t to depths with inside themselves to heal. There's a level of fear that has still taken hold of them but they're unwilling to see it for what it is. They panicked and ended up on bad trips. Exactly. <laughs> and that's because they weren't ready for it yet. They didn't do enough inner work just by themselves yet to be able to really learn from their experience. They tried to control it. And this is, this is what happens whenever you try to control these things. And they are trying to teach you or show you or sometimes force you to let go. They were seeking pleasure and rejected the frightening information their minds presented. Tribes that used mind-altering drugs like mescaline sought understanding, not sensation. Yep. They expected intense experiences without preparation. The conflict between light and dark can seem like madness. They expected intense experiences. That's what she said. They, they developed a relationship. And the, the spirit, Mescalino, They, they understood how to connect, how to engage, how to approach the experience with humility, and how to listen. Shamanic journeys always use the darker paths to expand understanding. Okay, I can vibe with that. They do not require drugs, just deep relaxation or intensification rituals and a willingness to release psychosocial defenses. Drums or chants are often an important part of the shamanic journey inward. They are images of going deep into the earth, or self, instead of upward and away from the earth. 
They are heavier, more fearsome images, and their power is great. That's exactly why so many people are afraid of these things and, and, and go towards you know the easy route or the accustomed route of ascending or going to heaven, going away from the earth. You're going away from your work then. A shamanic journey is less familiar than a sunrise meditation in contemporary culture. You know, now, now, now. <clears throat> okay. Final little D. Finding the feeling. Every bad feeling is potential energy toward a more right way of being if you give it space to move toward its rightness. Eugene Gindlin. When you put yourself in a special environment asking for wisdom, you will be flooded with information and memories. You will remember long ago hurts and joys. You will find that genetic memories also surface. Carl Jung described much of what we are sh of much of what we are as shared unconscious memories that have become a part of our DNA. The subjects that your mind explores may surprise you. Let it roam. Intuitive wisdom will bring up the heart of a problem when your mundane self may be concentrating on something entirely different. Beautiful. Let's see, is there anything else? I think that's it. So yeah, that's pretty crazy to just randomly open up to. I'm sure it was just happenstance, right? <laughs> it's okay. Last but not least, I'm gonna pull a card. Let's see if we can at least have a little bit of light here, right? Card for all of us. <laughs> Once again, okay, I think that's pretty much the last one I drew. <laughs> Which is cool, I mean, with all these synchronicities and uh, connectings of awareness and understandings and uh, being able to come together with, with all of these like-minded and like-hearted and like-spirited people. Uh, that's, that's a good card to draw that we are creating like a new earth you could liken it to or really it's just becoming more and more aware of the actual Earth, the actual realm, actual reality, and remapping it through our experiences, and then coming together collectively and sharing these experiencing experiences in each puzzle piece that we have. It's creating this masterpiece of a new. 
more truthful reality in Earth. Key words. Feeling grounded. Appreciating the good things in life. Manifestation. The element of Earth is associated with the concept of physical manifestation. Most ancient myths present the Earth as a warm, giving mother able to support all life through her creations. Her bountiful plants and trees offer us shelter and food, allowing us to live comfortably in the physical world. As such, the earth symbolizes the feminine forces of fertility and stability. When the earth card appears in an oracle reading, look for opportunities to take your dreams and turn them into concrete reality. Bingo, bingo! Perfecto. Yeah, that's fucking awesome. Alright. Well, that's it for now, y'all. <sighs> keep doing your work. Keep, keep grounding. Keep centering yourself. Seek balance. Seek the calm. But don't become attached to it. If something arises, because this is just the way of life, you know, we have to learn to navigate it. To ebb and flow with it. To see it for what it really is. And choose our course of action. How we perceive it. How we engage it. Keep surfing them waves, brah. In this tubular system. Surf's up. Peace.